first thing I feel when I'm performing is a great freedom because in, in life there's no take two. You, you, you don't get a chance to rehearse and I'm not the only one who's, who's observed this. Patrick Stewart, um, Lionel Richie have observed this. When you're on a stage, it's kind of like you can put life on pause. You don't have to worry about upsetting your loved ones or upsetting your boss or getting into trouble with tutors at college or school or whatever or your boss at work. Um, you know, the, the 1,001 different pitfalls of life that you have, for that little moment, you don't have that. So you're able to put that on pause and just, it's, for me, it's a freedom. Some folk get their release out of alcohol abuse or drug abuse. It's a drug to be up on a stage. You want to be performing. You get the reaction from the audience immediately when you've done well. Oh, well done, that's really, really good. And it's a rush. And I think every performer that ever there was and ever there will be, there's an element of you want to be loved. And Rick, the late, great Ricky Fulton said this. You want to be loved and you want to give love. For me, when I'm on a stage, it's a release, it's a freedom, I can express myself, I don't have to worry, I got bullied at school. Uh, so when I was on stage at school, that was the only place the bullies couldn't get you, was on a stage. You're safe at that point, because if they tried, they get flung out. Um, so it's, it's a freedom and it's a release and it's a, yeah, it's quite, quite therapeutic for me actually. You do get nervous before you go on, you always get the pre five minute jitters before you go on just to sort of up and don't slip in the banana peel here, but when, once you get going, you're fine, provided you've practiced enough, which I never do. <laughs> uh, there's always an element of tightrope walking, but it's, it's a release, it's a freedom. It really is, I think. I had one song played on the radio in August 2006. I got to the final of a UK songwriting contest, which is run by the Brit Trust, the body behind the Brit Awards. Um, that year my song finished in the top 4% of over 4,000 entries, I think it was, across the UK that year. Um, and I told my church minister and she knew somebody who did interviews for a sort of, sort of religious radio show on a Sunday morning and he took me into the 4th One Studios in Edinburgh and interviewed me and that was an interesting experience. And my song got played on the radio at about 10 to 7 on a Sunday morning. So been there, done that, and that was pretty darn cool to get there actually. So I was quite pleased with that. I don't drink excessively, I've never done drugs, I don't smoke, um, but if I need a sort of pick-me-up or just a sort of security blanket of life, music is my security blanket. And there are one or two bands if I, if, I re if I really have a case of the severe, severe blues, there's a few artists I will, I will veer towards. Like my best friend, when I was, certainly when I was at university, my best friend Paul knew that I'm not very good at talking when I'm, when I'm upset about something. So he'd say, you feeling okay, Graham? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all right, Paul, I'm all right, Paul. What CD are you listening to, Graham? Meatloaf. Right, okay, here's the deal here. Um, so there's a few artists I really do gravitate towards. Um, I found over the years music helps me to express myself and when I've not been sure what to say I'll usually find a song that just sums up how I feel and I still do that to this day so um, if you see me walking down the street and you think my face is chipping me if I'm listening to Meatloaf don't tell the psychologist. <laughs> I can bash the piano very very badly I can play guitar, I can play violin, I never did Formal lessons on a violin, I was classically trained on the viola. And by the time I left school at the age of 18, I was up to grade seven on viola, which is grade seven out of nine. And these grades are set by the Royal Academy of Scottish Music across the whole UK. So to get to grade seven was hard work, but it was it was good, good, good thing to put in your CV there. Um, and when I was 16, I started teaching myself guitar because all the other guys in the school played guitar and I didn't and they all got the girls and I didn't and I wanted a girlfriend, damn it! <laughs> so I started teaching myself to play guitar and a few years later started to teach myself how to write a song. I think every, I think every songwriter that ever there was has their own way of doing it. And eight times out of ten my personal way of doing it will be I'll sit with the guitar and I'll just goof around with chords and I'll just see what what chords sound okay together, like, can I give you an example? Like, for example, I'll just, one, one time I was sitting with the guitar and I just um, started doing So it 
start, like for example, that was one that I did. Um, and from that I sort of, does, does that sound like it fits together? Musically, does it sound like it fits together? Yes, it did. What, what sort of story is this song telling me here? Or, or sometimes it's a case of what story do I want to tell? Only a few occasions have songs just come out of nowhere and as cheesy as it sounds and as deep as it sounds, I mean out of nowhere. There was one time I was sitting at, the song that got to the semi, semi-final of the UK Songwriting Contest this year, I was literally sitting in college class one day. We were in recording technique class and we'd been there for two hours. I was bored because I have a short attention span anyway. We'd been there for two hours. I was bored, I was wanting to go home and Kevin, the guy who was in our college band, my college band, had his bass guitar plugged into the sound desk and the tutor goes to him, just, just make something up on your bass guitar, just, just make anything up, make anything up. So Kevin just sat there and just started going. And instead of paying attention to the tutor telling us now, if you do this with the sound desk and do that with that dial and that with that fader and blah, 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 I was sitting there going, told a girl I loved her, she and my, my bravery. I went home that night, wrote a song, played it to the rest of the band the following day. The day after that we did it in band practice and we did that song at the college gig at the end of the year. And that's the song that got to the semi-final of this year's UK songwriting contest. And that all came about just by me day in class. That's not what you're meant to do. Um, that doesn't happen often, but usually sit with the guitar, find a chord structure, find the melody to fit with the chord structure, and just after that I figure what I'm going to write about, whether it be personal or a story or something I want to say to someone, which I've done numerous times. Because um, there are good ways of saying things you can't really say in an everyday conversation. If you want to say to a girl, you're an absolute... Um, you know, usually you're going to get slapped, but if you go, la 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 la, you're a complete cow who I don't like, the chances are, hopefully, they don't realise it's you they're on about. Oh, that's a really nice song, la 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 la, she's a complete cow that he doesn't like. Little does she realise I mean you, you cow. <laughs> I've never put that one to the full test yet. I've, I've, I don't want to don't get the black eyed look, so. Um, but usually that's what I read about. Had a situation that needed to be dealt with. Be a man or a mouse. What a choice to have. A choice to have. She my my bravery 